Now, my dear, I feel in need of a distraction. Uh, perhaps we should think about a little trip of our own, yes? I uh, think too far, maybe just into London, hmm? Oh, Grandfather, really? You see, my dear, I'm not the old fuddy-duddy you imagine me to be. I'm more than happy to spend an afternoon in the fashionable centre of swinging 60s London. As you can see, I can cut a rather dashing figure myself. I'm really not sure about this, Susan. Oh, come on, Grandfather. It'll be fine, I promise. Oh, well, if you promise, I suppose it'll be all right. Oh, Grandfather, really? Please don't be grumpy. I thought we'd agreed we needed a nice distraction after all the trouble you went through with the Vortex Manipulator. But true enough, my dear. It's not something I'll forget in a hurry. Well, here it is. And you really want to ride this thing? Yes, of course. Why? You don't want to walk, do you? From Trotter's Lane to Carnaby Street? Not likely. Fares, please. Eh? What's you talking about? Fares, Grandfather. We have to pay. Come on, mate. I haven't got all day, you know. You're holding me up. i am still try to get a seat if you hadn't noticed. You gotta be quick in this life, Grandad. Puh, objectionable fellow. <clears throat> um, two to Piccadilly, please. That'd be two shillings. Thank you kindly. Fares, please. Any more fares? Piccadilly Circus. Piccadilly. Need a hand, old fella. Hey, Less of the old, if you don't mind. As you like. All aboard is coming aboard. To think we had to pay for that indignity. Huh. Thrown around like a couple of rag dolls. Oh. Didn't you like it? I thought it was rather fun. Well, we clearly have very different definitions of the word. So, what do you want to do now, child? Uh, once our innards are back in place, that is. Oh, I do feel queasy. Oh, would, would you like to sit down for a while? Uh, briefly. Just to catch my breath. Ah! The Shaftesbury Memorial. Oh, yes. Eros. Actually, it isn't Eros at all. Uh, that's a common mistake. This is his brother, Anteros, the god of mutual love. It was erected 130 years ago in memory of the good works of the 7th Earl of Shaftesbury. He did much to do away with child labour and promote education in the young. A fact for which you should be very grateful. Hmm. Yes, a lovely piece of bronze. Well, we can't stay here all day, can we? We'll be arrested for vagrancy. Come along, my dear. Let's see what all the fuss is about in Carnaby Street. Well, that was fun. Hmm. Well, I suppose it was fun, after a fashion. Mind you, I'm not sure why you need more clothes. 
was a very fine wardrobe in the ship with a large selection of outfits from across the galaxy, from a thousand different cultures. Isn't there something among all that to suit you, eh? Oh, Grandfather, the wardrobe is impressive, but none of those fashions would be suitable on Earth. After all, you did say we had to keep a low profile. Anyway, fashions change so quickly here on Earth, especially among young people. Huh. Well, considering what I've seen young people wearing today, that's probably for the best. <laughs> Well, I suppose we ought to find the bus stop. Oh, the indignity of it. Oh, look at this. What's that? In the newspaper. Seven more cases of the burning fever hit London. Specialists say that they are at a loss to explain the severe rash that is spreading throughout the capital. Symptoms are transmitted by direct contact with an infected person, and almost immediately the whole body turns a vivid red. Core temperature is elevated to 40 degrees Celsius, and coma follows shortly after. The Minister for Health was unavailable for comment, but it is believed that the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine has been consulted. Well, it sounds really awful. What do you think, Grandfather? Hmm. Well, I'm not familiar with the full range of diseases on this planet, but it seems to me that this is not native to Earth. Oh, d does that mean you think it's deliberate? Well, it's a remote possibility that it isn't. Uh, perhaps a visitor to this world who is carrying an infection and passed it on by accident. However, I'm inclined to think that this is deliberate. It sounds like something, uh, engineered. Oh, that sounds worrying. Indeed it does. Hmm. I need to have a think about this. Oh, the, there's a coffee shop across the street. Why don't we go in there, and then you can have a rest and think about it? Eh? Hey? Oh, yes, that's a good idea. Now, let's try not to get run over. Those buses are lethal. Oh, what did I say about those buses? Lethal, absolutely lethal. I'm surprised we got across the street in one piece. Look, Grandfather. There's a table over there. Hmm, I think I might have a strawberry milkshake. What will you have? Hmm? Oh, give me a moment. I'll look at the menu. Such as it is. Hmm, not a very inspiring bill of fare. Hello there. What will it be? Oh, hello. I'd like a strawberry milkshake, please. What about you, sir? Tea? Coffee? Oh, no. It's you again. Do, do you know this man, Grandfather? Good gracious, yes. It's... it's a... Uh, uh, uh... Silas Wenick, at your service, young lady. And a very fine young lady, too, I might add. Do you mind? That's my granddaughter. I was showing my appreciation. Oh, I don't mind. Oh, no, it's enough of that, thank you. Now, Mr. Wenick, I have a few things to say to you. I imagine you would have. Well, go on then, fire away. People are staring at us. That may have a lot to do with your grandfather's clothing. My clothing? And what's wrong with it? Impertinent fellow. Is everything all right? I hope you haven't been upsetting the customers again, Silas. Me? No! I'm a model employee. The Doctor and I are friends. Well, let's say we've uh, escaped an acquaintance. Oh, I see. Silas, you should really wait until you break to talk to your friends. Not a problem. I quit. You what? But I've got customers I'm needing to be served. Not my problem. Right, Doctor, I'm free to speak to you. <sighs> Might be wise if we take the discussion outside. The owner 
doesn't look very happy. Mm. Grandfather, I really think we should go. Oh, very well. So, what's your name? Susan. How do you know Grandfather? Well, it all started out near a farm in Montana in 1913. Enough of a chit-chat, if you please. Oh, okay. Say your piece. I told you to get off this planet. And furthermore, you promised to warn off all your fellow souvenir hunters. So what are you doing here, eh? Don't worry, I was a good little boy. I did just what you told me to. People were so scared by my report that for 20 years no one set foot on planet Earth. Well, at least none of the souvenir hunters from Stowe, anyway. Huh. Well, it's not been 20 years for you. You're still a young man. Hmm. It's probably only been a year or maybe two at the most since we last saw each other. So your account doesn't add up. Just be patient. I'll explain everything if you let me speak. Is he always like this? Stop trying to draw my granddaughter into the conversation. This is between me and you. Fine. I went ahead a couple of decades and checked the records. But how? I met you in, uh, it was, uh, oh, oh, what was it, what was it? It was 1913. And now it's 1963. So how come you're here now, eh? Simple. I got myself a vortex manipulator. Huh, I should have guessed. They seem to be handing them out like sweets these days. Not quite. I sold my gun, did a few deals that paid me quite well, and managed to get together the money to buy it from a retired time agent. Back then I thought it was the best investment I'd ever made. Changed my mind since then. Oh, not lived up to your expectations then? <laughs> I made a few journeys quite successfully, managed to put some money back in my bank account. After all, the manipulator did put me seriously out of pocket. Hmm. Back to souvenir hunting are here, I suppose. Not at first, no. I tried some other things first, but they didn't pay as well. <sighs> Believe me, I tried for two years to make a go of things, but nothing worked. Do you know how expensive it is living back on Stowe? Well, anyway, yes, I went back into souvenir hunting. Oh, Wenick, you can't. You mustn't. Galactic law is clear. Article 374 of the, uh, uh, um... Article 374 of the Shadow Proclamation states that lethal force may be used to recover a stolen artifact of great cultural value, etc, etc, etc. Well, that's not the precise legal wording, but you've covered the essential point. Lethal force, young man. Lethal force. Tell me, is the risk really worth it? Eh? To survive in a universe that doesn't help the underdog? Yes, Doctor, it is. Well, it's all academic now. On my journey to 1963, the Vortex Manipulator just stopped working. I think the power cells burnt out. So now I'm stuck here. Could be worse, I suppose. I could be back in Edwardian times. At least things here in 1963 are a bit more advanced, though not by much. So you started working at a coffee shop? Why not? I needed to rent a room and pay for food, for that matter. Whatever you may think of me, Doctor, I haven't sunk so low that I'd steal food. I do have some principles and some pride. Yes, yes, yes. All very interesting, I'm sure. But you can't stay here. I'm pleased we agree about something at last, but what can I do? I'm not an engineer. Maybe you could do something. Help me fix this thing. I had the use of a vortex manipulator myself recently, it's true. But I can't pretend I understand the technology particularly well. Anything I try might be a bit hit and miss. Listen, I'm stuck on a level five planet. I'm grateful for anything you can do. Oh, why don't you use your ring, Grandfather? It might be able to recharge the manipulator or even repair its circuits, if that's what's needed. Hey? Oh, what a good idea, my dear. Do you know it just might work? It's a pity you didn't think to suggest this when I was having all those difficulties using a... Craston Jarvis's uh, Vortex Manipulator. And you didn't think of it either. What was that, young lady? Well, are you going to use your magic ring or not? It is not magic. It is a piece of highly sophisticated technology, uh, far beyond the understanding of someone like you. OK, OK, no need to get all hot under the wind collar. So are you going to use your highly sophisticated technology or not? Not. What? 
Oh, Grandfather, why won't you help him? Oh, I will, child, I will, but not yet. And only if he does something about this current, uh, medical crisis. Oh, do you mean the burning plague? But that's nothing to do with me. Oh, really? Do you expect me to believe that you're not involved in this, this, uh, b b the terrible affliction, hmm? Me? How would I be able to do something like this? Grandfather, he's right. How could he do something like this? He's not a chemist, he's innocent. Innocent? Oh, not a word I'd associate with this fellow. Hmm, but I take your point. Mind you, my dear, you're far too trusting. When it could have been employed by the chemist who manufactured this plague. Doctor, I accept your reasoning, but you got it wrong. I'm not working for anyone. That burning plague is as much as a surprise to me as it is to you. Besides, I'm trapped here on Earth. If I'd been sent here to spread the plague, wouldn't I have left as soon as I was sure it was working? He has a point, Grandfather. Maybe, maybe, but consider this. Perhaps he really was involved, but the plan went wrong once his manipulator developed a fault. Your Grandfather has a very suspicious mind. Ha! Huh. I just know a rotten apple when I meet one. Listen, Doctor, I know we got off on the wrong foot when we met before, but I thought that was all behind us. Now, I've been the first to admit that you'd absolutely no reason to trust me, and if I were in your shoes, I wouldn't trust me either. I don't know how to prove to you that I'm not involved. Can't you hook me up to a lie detector machine or something? Oh, let him prove himself to you, Grandfather. Hmm, very well, young man. I accept your word on the matter, for now. But if you want me to fix your vortex manipulator, then you'll help me and Susan to find a way to stop this plague, yes? You got yourself a deal, Doctor. But to be honest, I'm not sure how much help I can be. Yes, well, you might surprise yourself. Now, you'll consider yourself under my direction. Okay, anything for a quiet life. Eh? Hey? Now, first things first. We need to examine a plague victim and gather some data. Hang on, you want to do what? I'm not touching a plague victim. You Time Lords may have immunity from this sort of thing, but I'm fairly sure that I don't. At this stage, we really know nothing about the plague. It might affect us too, but we won't let that stop us finding out more about it. Well, aren't you the little firebrand? I don't know about that. It's... It's just logical. Our technology could help. So why should we hold back? Susan is right, Wenick. But we will take every precaution. Have no fear. Well, we should get started. D hang on, where are you going? Why, to the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, of course. Where else? Well, come on, Wenick. We haven't got all day. Shake a leg. <sighs> If we catch the plague, we probably won't have it all day. Uh, you two better wait out here. I shan't be long. Is he always like this? What do you mean? Where do I start? High and mighty, tetchy, rude? Should I stop now? <laughs> he can be like that. But you don't know him like I do. Let me guess, you're going to tell me that under that gruff exterior, he's a real teddy bear. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. But he can be sweet. And he is very caring. Maybe if I stick around long enough, he might be able to grow on me too. I'd like that. Would you? Let's be going. And quickly, I think. Why? What did you do? I think the appropriate word would be, uh, bamboozle. Yes, that's right. I bamboozled them. I'm not following this. Are you following this? What's happened, Grandfather? Oh, well, I had to get some information. And to do that, I needed to prove I had a right to be there and, uh, well, ask the question. So, what was the question? How much they had deduced about the plague, of course. When, it, my dear fellow, do try to keep up. I was able to demonstrate that I knew as much, if not more, about epidemiology than they did, and so they accepted my story that I was a visiting expert. 
I was then able to get them to share some data with me, uh, such as it is. I didn't mean the dean of the faculty, uh, Professor Spooner, but I found out enough about him so that I could drop his name into the conversation at our next stop. Our next stop? Why? Where are we going now? Well, I need to see a live subject, don't I? <sighs> We're going to a hospital, my boy. Come on, you two. Enough dilly-dallying. But you can't just walk into a hospital and demand to see a patient. You don't know Grandfather very well, do you? He's very persuasive and very persistent. Well, this I have got to see. This looks as good a place as any. Just keep your wits about you, both of you. Ah, nurse, good day to you. Can I help you? Oh, uh, yes, perhaps, perhaps. I'm here to see one of the patients. You'll have to be a little more specific, sir. It's doctor, and specifically, one of the cases of the burning plague. Doctor? Doctor who? Eh? Oh, uh, Dr. Smith. I'm a consultant from, uh, from, uh... Gallifrey. Gallifrey? Is that an island? Uh, yes. That's right. We weren't informed you were coming, Doctor. Madam, there are lives hanging in the balance. The paperwork doesn't interest me in the least. Oh, yes, that's us. Always ready to get to grips with infectious diseases. Oh, my students. Early days for them yet, but uh, keen to grapple with this aggressive dermatitis, you know. Mm. They don't look like the usual interns we see. Well, madam, the only way I can respond to you is that we do things differently in Ireland. Clearly. I hope I don't detect a note of disapproval in your tone. Prejudice is a terrible thing. I beg your pardon? Well, I can assure you, Doctor, that I meant nothing of the kind. There are many Irish nurses working here and giving excellent services to the public. Just as surely as these two young people hope to do so once their training is complete. Now, to the patients, if you please. Oh, but Doctor, they're hardly dressed appropriately to go into the ward. Oh, I can't help that. We've only got the clothes on our backs. We went straight from the airport to the School of Hygiene and Tropical Diseases and then came here. You... you've been to see Professor Spooner? <laughs> well, we weren't there to play tiddlywinks, now were we, my dear? Well, n no, of course not. I can get you some white coats to cover your street clothes. That would be very kind of you, nurse. Of course, Doctor. I'll be just a moment. Here you are. If you would leave the coats at the nurse's station as you leave, it would be most appreciated. But of course. Our thanks. Now, if you'd be so good as to show us to one of the latest admissions. Follow me, please. And how many admissions have you had? We've had 35 admitted today, taking our total to 280. When we ran out of beds, we had to transfer some of the patients to another hospital. To be honest, it looks like this crisis is going to overwhelm us. Do anti-inflammatory creams help? For a few cases, but the plague seems to adapt, and then the victims suffer as before. Ah, oh, here we are. This is Mr. Owen Chesterfield, 39 years of age, admitted three days ago and displaying all of the symptoms. High temperature, red blistered skin, paralysis of the limbs and unresponsive to stimulus. I've... I've never seen anything like it. Oh, that poor man. It's just horrible. Just horrible. And I understand that blood tests have yielded no information as to the cause. None whatsoever. Doctor, if you would excuse me, I must get back to my duties. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, nurse. No reaction. Must be like a coma. 
Poor man. There's nothing we can do to help him. It could be some sort of psychic shock. Couldn't it, Grandfather? Eh? Oh, yes, very likely. Brought on by the blistering heat of the epidermis. Hmm. His chart says his current temperature is 108 degrees centigrade. I'm missing something. Something important. You so often do, Doctor. Ah, the Rani. What are you doing here? <laughs> Trying to blend in, unlike you. Strutting around like you own the place. I'm playing a role, and rather well, it seems. What as? A consultant. Oh, well then. I take it back. You are blending in. Who is she? The Rani, a time lady, but not a particularly nice one. I heard that girl. Now why don't you quieten down and let the adults talk? This isn't a matter for time tots. Oh, you rotten old witch. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Let's focus on the essential, shall we? Rani, I presume you're responsible for this burning plague. I hate to admit it, but on this occasion, humans make appallingly poor lab rats. That's monstrous! Well, yes. It's been a terrible waste of my resources and my time. That's not what I meant, and you know it. Your granddaughter is almost as sanctimonious as you are, Doctor. Okay, lady, it looks like you've got some work to do putting all this right, or I might have to get nasty. I don't respond to ideal threats from thugs. Oh, it's not an idle threat. Just so you know, the barrel is fully loaded. Really, Wenick, I thought you'd given up guns. I sold my laser pistol, yes, but I got this revolver quite by chance a few days after I arrived here. Thought it might come in handy. Ha! You won't use it. Ha! I wouldn't be too sure of that if I were you. So why don't you help these people, eh? I've got more important things to do with my time. I'm not wasting any more energy on a failed experiment. Oh, I think you are. There's something about you. You're not the usual ape. Oh, and there was me thinking you were going to compliment me on my style. I'm Stovian. You're from Stowe? Interesting. Mind you, that means you're not much further up the food chain than these humans. Yes, that's fine. Just keep on insulting the man holding the gun. Everyone, can we just focus, please? Rani, I had suspected that this was deliberate, but it sounds like this wasn't your intention. So something's gone wrong. What were you trying to do? In simple terms, if you please. Oh, very well. I was trying to develop a dermal shield for the sun makers of Quatok. And? Oh, come on, Rani, stop stalling. Just tell us the whole thing. The mining company found that the radiation and the heat were getting through the workers' protective suits in a day. They needed to increase the protection without compromising the efficiency of the suits. Simple solution? Increase the protection of the workers' own skin. You mean to tell me you've gone freelance? <laughs> and what if I have? Huh? It's better than wandering aimlessly around the universe. Besides... I need to finance my own projects. But why? I thought you were on a panel of consultants working for the president. I was. Things went... wrong. Oh, come on, love. Don't leave us hanging. What happened? Your pet is very pushy, Doctor. Oh, just answer the question, Ushas. I was tinkering with the biochemistry of some mice, and they grew to an enormous size. Ten times normal size, in fact. Quite an achievement, really. 
Indeed. Well, yes, quite impressive. But I sense there is more to this story. One of the mice escaped its cage and went on a rampage for the capital and ate the president's cat. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the president's cat. Oh, my dear Ronnie, you never cease to amaze me. That's priceless, absolutely priceless. <laughs> Grandfather, really, it's terrible. Just an idea, but why don't we take this conversation outside? Maybe before that nurse comes back? Eh? Oh, yes, I suppose it might be for the best. Besides, there's nothing we can do here. At least, not for the moment. Rani? Very well. I can listen to your moralizing outside just as well as I can here. Yes, of course. Oh, we'd better leave the lab coats here, I suppose. The last thing we need is that nurse running after us, accusing us of theft. So, what happens now? Rani, do you have a TT capsule? Yes. Why do you ask? Because I presume that's where you created this dermatological disaster. And so that's where we're going to uh, create a cure. We? What do you mean, we? There is no we. You're just getting in my way. Oh, my dear Rani, from now on, it is most definitely we. I have no intention of letting you out of my sight until this crisis is over. Transcendental dimensions. You've really got it all going on in here, haven't you? Yes, I suppose we have. Gallifrey's great gift. So, what do we do now? We? We are doing nothing. I shall go to the lab and start work on the antidote. I will tolerate the doctor with me. But you and the ape will stay here. Hey, I do have feelings, you know. That is of no interest to me. Touch nothing while we're away. Well, come on, Doctor. The sooner this business is concluded, the better. Yes, yes, of course. Remember, we're guests here. So better do as she says. Touch nothing. Oh, this is just like being at home when I was a kid. Touch nothing, stand up straight, speak when you're spoken to. Ha. Don't worry. They won't be long. I may not like her or trust her, but I must admit that the Rani is a very accomplished biochemist. And with Grandfather to help her, well, I'm sure it won't take her long to find an antidote. Oh, I've been gone for hours. It's actually only been one hour, 42 minutes and eight seconds. There's no clock in here and you're not even wearing a watch, so how do you even know that? I'm a time lady. Remember? We can feel time. Oh, finally. You're back. Have you succeeded? Uh, it remains to be seen, my dear. We need to test the antidote on some live subjects. However, the simulator seems to suggest we have reason for confidence. Your grandfather knows more about genetics than I've given him credit for. He actually proved to be quite helpful. Praise, Rani. Oh, that's very welcome, I must say. Even if a little unexpected. Right. Let's go back to the hospital, shall we? Agreed. And what of these two? Now, don't worry, I'm not going to suggest that they come with us or that they stay here. They can wait in my ship. Oh, uh, but, Grandfather, I could help. I don't think so, my dear. I need you to, uh, look after Wenick. But, but, Grandfather... Uh, I don't need a babysitter. That is a matter of opinion. 
Can we dispense with all the insults, please? We have work to do. Come along. Now, my dear, off you go. I'll see you later. All right, Grandfather. Goodbye. Goodbye from me too, if anyone cares. We don't. Now, Doctor, let's see how good this antidote really is. Do you want another cup of tea? No, I'm good, thanks. How about another game of chess? No, thank you. <sighs> oh, Grandfather, you've been gone for ages. Now he's complaining about the time. Well, it was a slow process, and I had to keep an eye on the Rani to make sure she didn't lose interest and leave. However, we persevered, and I'm pleased to say that the antidote was a success. So, all's well that ends well. Hmm. And has she gone now? Yes, back to the stars. No doubt to cause havoc elsewhere, I shouldn't wonder. That Rani was quite a woman. I mean, I like her style, but she's a bit of an ice maiden, isn't she? I think she's vile. Uh, yes, well, she's an acquired taste. Well, it's been quite the adventure, and judging by my experience, that's saying something. So, Doctor, you caught the real culprit behind the burning plague and you produced an antidote, all good stuff. Gold stars for everyone. Now, will you turn your attention to my little problem? I don't know. What do you think, Susan? Hmm? Oh, Grandfather, don't tease him. Of course he's going to help you, Silas. Well, give him a device, young man. Uh, thank you. Hmm. I think I'm going to plug this into the ship's diagnostic unit. See if we can get an idea of what's wrong. Right, let's see, shall we? Hmm, hmm. Yes, well, uh, you were right. The power cell is burnt out and beyond repair. Oh, the useless piece of junk. I should never have bought it. Patience, Wendig, patience. I have more to say. That's only the bad news. I fancy I have something that could replace the power cell. Oh, and you'll be pleased to know that the ship did not detect any other problems with the device. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, well, thank me when I've completed the repair. Uh, Susan, please go to storage locker uh, three... And fetch me an A500 power, sir, would you? Yes, Grandfather. Doctor, I do appreciate all the effort you're making to help me out. Actually, it surprised me. Really? Oh, don't you think I'm the sort of person who helps out people in need? No, it's not that. I just know how you feel about me travelling through time and space. A vortex manipulator gives me lots of options. You could have removed the temptation. You could have just taken me home in your ship. Well, I can't fault your reasoning, my boy, but I must confess, it did go through my mind. But I think I can trust you to, uh, turn over a new leaf, eh? Use the device to get home, and then sell the wretched thing. And then, well, try to get some stable employment, some honest work. Well, as I said before, life on Stowe is hard, so I can't make any promises. <laughs> but I shall give it my best shot. You have my word. Here you are, Grandfather. Yes, yes, that seems a good fit. Now, I just need to use my ring to recalibrate the machine. Did it work? Uh, yes, yes. However, this is a different type of power cell, so the device has to compensate for that. It might prove a little sluggish when you, uh, dematerialize. Sluggish? That doesn't sound good. Well, uh... No, I, I don't suppose it does. 
It just means that you won't disappear uh, instantaneously. We will see you fade away uh, gradually. Oh, uh, right. Uh, so what are my odds, Doctor? Your odds? Oh, of survival. Uh, very high indeed, my boy. I have every confidence the device will operate correctly. Uh, the weakness will be in repeated use. That will put a strain on the power cell. A, a, a tremendous strain. A strain it wasn't designed to take. Oh, well, that's okay, isn't it? Uh, after all, I only need a one-way trip back to Stowe. A wise decision. Well, just set your coordinates and then uh, away you go. Okay, I'm ready. In spite of getting off on the wrong foot, I think we made quite a good team, didn't we? Well, you did as you were told, I suppose. I should be thankful for small mercies. Oh, really, Grandfather? Going to miss you, Susan. <sighs> I wish you didn't have to go. I'm afraid I have to. Thanks for the second chance, Doctor. Oh, goodbye, Silas. I'll miss you. What are you doing? Come here, child! Susan, Doctor, get off me! Ah, ah, ah! <laughs>